Welcome to Security and Compliance Weekly. Today, we're joined by Oleg Shamonko, who's the head of business development for and co-founder of Ekran System. We're going to talk about insider threat monitoring, including topics such as activity monitoring, identity and access management, and privileged access. We're also going to touch on how these activities not only help to secure your environment, but also how they meet specific compliance requirements. We might even bring up PCI. So join us as we continue our journey of tearing down silos and building bridges on Security and Compliance Weekly. This is a Security Weekly production. And now, it's the show that bridges the requirements of regulations, compliance, and privacy with those of security. Your trusted source for complying with various mandates, building effective programs, and current compliance news. It's time for Security and Compliance Weekly. The average cost to respond to an insider threat is $11.45 million. That's a lot of reasons why a functional insider threat program must be a core part of any modern cybersecurity strategy. To protect your organization's sensitive data and meet compliance requirements, you need controls in place to deter, detect, and disrupt insider threats. With Ekran System, you can meet control requirements imposed by compliance mandates all within one insider threat management platform. Get your free 30-day trial at securityweekly.com forward slash Ekran. That's E-K-R-A-N, and fulfill your compliance requirements. It's the end of the quarter. You've got a mountain of compliance tasks to complete, daily requests from sales for security documentation, and an upcoming audit. You're waiting on evidence requests, and you can't find the policy you wrote last week. Compliance management is hard. Aptable Comply makes it simple. Comply is an end-to-end, purpose-built GRC platform to manage compliance. From automating evidence collection to integrating with your existing SaaS tools, Comply simplifies the hardest parts of managing compliance. Reduce manual processes and build trust with your customers. Visit securityweekly.com forward slash aptable to learn more. Are you struggling to reduce your cybersecurity risks and meet compliance mandates? Wishing you could be proactive instead of reactive? You need a solution that integrates cybersecurity together to make it affordable, accessible from anywhere, and simplistic, so you can gain a return on investment on your resources. Cyrisma is your answer. It gives you a single interface to identify sensitive data, vulnerable systems, insecure configurations, track progress, and assign accountability. Visit securityweekly.com forward slash Cyrisma today for a seven-day test drive and impress your leadership. That's Cyrisma, C-Y-R-I-S-M-A. Welcome to episode number 42 of Security and Compliance Weekly, which is being recorded on the first unofficial day of fall, September 8th, 2020. Uh, I'm assuming lots of folks out there are still working from home, and they're probably now competing for bandwidth with all their kids that are having to do virtual schooling. So uh, hopefully we can squeeze by and you're able to watch us today. Speaking of which, uh, I have two daughters uh, that are both teachers and are both starting their first day of teaching remotely, and they've already reported this morning that each one of them, respectively, have had their their portals crash, so they're not able to do anything. One's in Philadelphia, one's in Richmond. At any rate, I'm your host, Mr. Jeff Mann, and I am joined today by my illustrious co-host, Mr. Josh Marpet, Mr. Scott Lyons, and Mr. John Snyder, Esquire. Gentlemen, welcome. Hey, you know, this is going to be a really fun episode because we get to talk about something that's near and dear to all of our hearts, and that is how do you stop the insider threat, right? But before yep. we get to that, uh, the there's been a press release that came out, right, about... Cyber Risk Alliance and what happened. Jeff, do you want to talk about that real quick? Say a few words. Cyber Risk Alliance. Why does that name ring a bell? Hmm. Oh, yeah. They're now our boss. <laughs> they're now our bosses. That's, yes, exactly. That's, they're now our bosses. Uh, if you missed it, and I haven't actually seen the press release, so I can't speak to it, but uh, it's in the Discord. Uh, Security Weekly Productions has been acquired by a company called Cyber Risk Alliance. So you can read up on it in the. Uh, in the discord server thank you uh scott for putting the link up i'll read it too when i'm not talking and not paying attention so 
The Cyber Risk Alliance owns SC Media, uh, InfoSec World, uh, Security Weekly, and all of the associated podcasts now. So they're a pretty hefty powerhouse in information security media. And I think that's fascinating. And I think that we're going to have a really good time having access to that entire stable of media properties. What's uh, what's scary is is how much our audiences uh, might be growing shortly once we tap into their their customer database mailing list whatever they call it, but uh, I do have a couple other announcements before we we tune turn our attention to the issue at hand which is insider threat. Uh, first off, B sides Boston is back in action for their ten year anniversary. The conference will be held virtually on Saturday September twenty sixth and tickets are only ten dollars. You can get your very own ticket by going to https colon slash slash bsidesbos.org. That's bsidesboss.org. Uh, some of the Security Weekly team is actually going to be hanging out in our own channel on the Besides Boston Discord server. Uh, we'll be answering questions and maybe doing some contests, so we hope to see you there. Also, if you uh, are so inclined, you can join the Security Weekly mailing list and get uh, announcements for all of our webcasts and virtual trainings, as well as receiving a personal inv invitation to our Discord server. We're, we've been having a lot of fun on the Discord server for the last month or so since we've been using it during our live broadcasts. To get there, you can go to securityweekly.com forward slash subscribe, click on the button to join the list. All right. Uh, Today we have uh, a special guest with us, uh, our uh, sponsor, Ekron System, who I was first introduced to, I think, back in June, because I got a, a LinkedIn message from one of their marketing people asking, well, first off, they thanked us for the great show that Security and Compliance Weekly is, so they thanked us for putting, us, putting the show on, which was kind of cool to get feedback, and they also were asked if they were interested, if we were interested in reviewing security products that are related to the PCI field. And I like perked up PCI. So I went to their website and lo and behold, uh, much to my surprise and amazement, they actually listed several specific PCI DSS requirements that they felt like their product actually meets. And I immediately wrote back and said, wow, you know, just the, the fact that you've got actual requirements listed on your website and not the usual generic well we monitor for compliance like most vendors do it was like sold i want to i want to talk to you guys i, I want to have you guys on the show uh fast forward a couple months later and here they are they've been a sponsor for the last couple months they signed up for a sponsorship and today finally and i know he's been he's been chopping at the bit anxious to get on the show uh we have olag shamanko with us olag welcome to Security Oleg. and Compliance Weekly. Oleg, sorry. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for joining this interview. And uh, I assume I should tell a little bit more about me, about our company. Uh, my name is Alek Shamanko. I am sitting now in Ukraine, East Europe. And I'm a co-founder of several IT companies, including the Kran System Incorporation. Uh, I got a master's degree in mathematics, diploma with honor. I worked in uh, software engineering service industry for more, it's about 20 years. So I, particip I participated in about 100 different security projects. I have 10 years experience in building and managing security, uh, successful security R&D team for leading vendors in the United States, in UK, in career software markets. As for our company, Kran System is inside the threat protection product. Uh, we, we started our sales and marketing activities uh, eight years ago, uh, mostly from Europe and uh, Pacific Asia. Uh, at the moment, we have uh, totally about thousand of customers, um, mostly from financial institution, government, uh, etc. Uh, we are included in privileged account management for the financial service sector, a special publication by NIST, National Institute of Standards and Technology. We are listing it in approved partner providers and independent software vendors for Windows Virtual Desktop. So they tested, Microsoft tested our solution and now recommend our solution to their customers. <clears throat> Uh, very important, we are growing more than, it's a, we have growing about 100% annually 
during last four years. And even with COVID situation, we expect the same this year to compare with marketing growing only 70%. Uh, my official role in the company now is head of business development, but I also take part in building technology strategies and roadmap for the Ekran product as a product manager. Um, I listened to your previous interviews where you asked it about hobbies. <laughs> so I will not wait for your question. My hobby is badminton. I tried different sport, parachute jumping, everything, but I... In my opinion, badminton is the best sport worldwide. So now I'm ready for your questions. <laughs> well, thanks, Oleg. And, and, and thank you for jumping right in with a little bit about yourself without me having to read from my script. I do have uh, one question for you leading off that we like to call our hot seat question, uh, which is, and especially in the context of your, of your product, uh, it'll be interesting as we talk about this today. But you know, where where do you fall personally, or where does Ekron System fall in terms of this thing that we like to call the security versus compliance continuum? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I'm not sure. Could could you repeat the question? I'm not sure you understand you correctly. What what do you think? Sure, I, I will be happy to restate the question for you. Uh, one of the reasons why we put this show together is because there is a, 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 a great disconnect between what we call the security world, which tends to be the hacker community, vendors, uh, developers, uh, and what we call the compliance world, the world of audits and assessments and PCI and, and NIST and HIPAA and SOC 1s and 2s and so on and so forth. So, you know, a lot of people, you know, that are on the security side look down their nose at the compliance world. And a lot of people in the compliance world sort of don't know what the security world is all about, but they talk funny and dress funny. So they try to avoid them. So, uh, you know, we just try to like to set the stage just to, yeah, you know, on. there's no right or wrong answer, but we're just interested in, you know, in, in, in the world that you live in, how do you see the security world? How do you see the compliance world? Do they work together, play together? Are they, uh, are they, are they related? Are they different? What are okay. you, what are your views on okay. that? So let me back to, to, to our history, you know, <clears throat> if we are talking about inside the threat generally. So as you know, previously IT security was oriented mostly to external threat protection. This is different antiviruses, firewalls, and you know many security compliances, they, they have requirements to have antiviruses, firewall, whatever. But uh, mm -hmm. in, inside the threat protection was very underestimated subject, according to Verizon, according to many analytics companies. Uh, you know this report, Panemon Institute report, that it costs average 11 and a half million <clears throat> now uh, on incident uh, caused by insider threat. So, if we are talking five years ago, six years ago, we when we started our product with purely monitoring tool, we we try to educate people. So we we try to explain why it's so important. But um, now, because of many cases in security, you know, you can see this almost every day, almost weekly. We have more and more different security compliances, which require established inside the threat program in your company. So we are talking about, for example, uh, NIST, uh, 853 security compliance, and we have more and more leads on uh, in, in, inbound leads on our website because of this compliance. Swift customer security program, new, uh, which was released two, uh, two years ago, uh, they have requirements to establish inside a threat program. HIPAA, GDPR, PCI DSS as well. So, so we have more and more security compliances about, about this. I hope I answered your question. So we, no, now, like we shouldn't, said, now we shouldn't educate people why it's important, because <laughs> there are many compliances now about this. Wait, um, hang on. Actually, I think I have, hang on. 
яка ваша думка щодо дотримання та безпеки? Яка... Did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This okay. is Ukrainian. Yeah. My native language. <laughs> yeah, well, I did a translate. So I translated, what's your opinion on compliance versus security? Because you entered in terms of Ekran, and I respect that. But we're asking uh, more of your personal opinion, I think. And thus, I misunderstood your answer. What is my opinion? Uh, you know, it's a um, hard question because we provide, uh, we provide a product to our customer. And very often, we even don't know how exactly our customer uses this product. No, no, ignore the product. Ignore the product. Security, okay. compliance. Okay. They're the same? They're different? I, I don't see the difference. We are a company which uh, certified by ISO and we pass this compliance. And uh, this is mandatory for now for, for this reality to, to be okay. protected. Works. Works. Interesting. Okay. So, you know, uh, so you, you actually mentioned something in an earlier discussion about, um, uh, do you mind if I go into the user behavior analysis? Oh, Cause yeah. You, you said something that was just like, I, I'm itching to talk about. Uh, you said that user behavior analysis is crap. And uh, I would <laughs> love to discuss that. <laughs> it's not a crap. Um, okay, let me explain. So... Wait, that was slang. Uh, I can use correct terminology. <laughs> <Go ahead>. okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, we, we uh, it was pretty big idea for us to, to start uh, artificial intelligence uh, engine for our product because we have a lot of different monitored data. And it was, re of course, requirement from our marketing, from our board of directors. So this is top, uh, pretty hot topic. Everybody loves uh, UIBA, at, uh, artificial intelligence, etc. Et and we have consulting with many security companies and many services companies, which very good experience. Right. We discuss it, how we can build this engine in our product. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, I realized that it is, it is impossible for inside that threat. So don't believe anybody. The only thing Why? we can do, the, because it's pretty hard to detect, is it normal activity or not? For example, if somebody visited adult sites, why I should use artificial intelligence? I just can create manual rules for this. So in working time, you are not able to, to visit adult sites. If somebody opened, I don't know, some folder, first time is it good activity or not you don't know you will have a lot of different false positives so it right. is impossible Absolutely. to detect is it a correct uh, solution or not uh, behavior or not so the only thing we can do right now is detect potentially compromised account this is really we can do so we can detect it's something suspicious with typical working time something suspicious with speed of typing on cable so it doesn't look like Jeff. It potentially compromised account. So please check this. But we are not able to detect this is bad activities or not bad activities. And you know, we even uh, thought about to send monitored data to to internet and uh, to, to create global database because we have video recording, we have a lot of indexed data. We, we want to teach our database uh, in our data center and, and try to, to, to build some rules, but it is impossible because our customers, they don't have even connection with internet because we have a lot of sensitive data like passwords, like uh, sensitive information, credit card holder. So we are working completely offline. Nobody will send this information even to Microsoft or uh, Amazon to analyze and create big database. So. As an engineer, I would say that it is impossible right now, at least this year. Okay, so, so you're saying that artificial intelligence does not work for user uh, behavior analysis because you, you're going to get massive amounts of false positives. And no AI can actually go through all those false positives properly in order to actually determine a problem or a predicament or an issue, right? 
Exactly. If you have any okay. problem, you can just manually create rules exactly for this problem. But okay. So how is what you're doing different than uh, an AI-based user behavior analysis system? Okay, what we can do right now, we can send a lot of different data to CM, Hewlett, for example, ArcSight or Splunk, and different okay. CM systems, they have uh, different plugins for, for to detect some abnormal behavior. But again, it would be a lot of false positive. What we can do right now is to detect potentially compromised accounts. That is all. We, we, we can't guarantee you that we can detect inside the threat automatically. You know, by, by, I, I, actually, by I respect baseline. the honesty. I respect the honesty because I'll tell you what, I've talked to a lot of companies about insider threat detection, it's, and a lot of them have a lot of, um, uh, what's the word for crap in Ukrainian? Uh, uh, <laughs> no, no, skip offensive words. I would say this <laughs> okay. is everything marketing. This is marketing. Yeah, it's marketing, in, in my yes. opinion, I, I, as an engineer. Totally agreed. Totally agreed. There's a lot of marketing uh, flim-flam. There's a lot of ridiculousness in the marketing of uh, uh, insider threat. Now, what you're saying is and we can detect a potentally compromised account. That makes yeah, sense. Only, only potentially compromised, nothing more. After this, okay. you have to research. You have to make investigation uh, manually on any suspicious activities, on some suspicious person, but we can detect automatically. So are you okay. able to talk about, you know, if you're not using AI, or if you're not doing behavior analysis, you know, what are the, what is some of the secret sauce, if you're able to share with us uh, about how you are detecting, I mean, what does a potentially compromised account look like? How, how, how are you making those kind of judgment calls? Uh, right now, if we are talking about potentially compromised accounts, there are different rules, like typical working time, like uh, fingerprint of your okay. uh, case stroke monitoring, so we can detect something wrong with this. Of course, we have some issues, for example, with cloud services because of latency. But uh, again, I would say this is more marketing stuff. Right now, mm. what we can provide, we, we provide you, uh, the core functionality of our product is indexed video screen recording. So we literally record all user activities in screen. In, uh, we can record in smooth video, plus we record uh, metadata, started applications, uh, activity titles, etc. And by this metadata, you can uh, search necessary video episode, uh, create reports and alerts. For example, mm -hmm. alert again about somebody tried to copy some information from this website, corporate website, to USB device. So this is not allowed by our corporate policy. We can even not to catch malicious activities or suspicious activities. We can educate people by, by, by these rules. So we, we, uh, we allow by our product to generate different rules by monitored information and provide this information to security or to just to show warning message to user. So don't do this in working time. So, Oleg, uh, we have a, a Discord server where uh, several of our listeners are, are corresponding with us, communicating with us live during the show. And, and we have a question from our audience. They're okay. curious as to what degree uh, this detection of the account is happening within the Ekron system itself, or are you just collecting the data and passing it on to whatever the SIM tool that your we, customers we support are using? Both. Okay. We support so we can we have embedded engine because mm -hmm. people because why we we have this because we we know this data we know exactly what this is started application this is URL of website but additionally we can provide this data to SIM to CM system and right. uh, th because this is mandatory now for enterprise level the security program of course and right. so we are like data source provider additional data source provider for cm system so we we provide you visited urls started application etc and uh, after this we th the most important we provide video so mm. uh, possibly it would take some time for investigation but nothing can be hidden because of video mm -hmm. so you literally see all user activities 
somebody created zip ar- archive sent to FTP. So possibly investigation would uh, can take you one hour, two hours. But uh, anyway, you will finally uh, will be able to find anything you need. Are you good, Josh? Because I, I wanted to ask a PCI-related question. No, no, go ahead, go, or, go ahead, good. Yeah, that was uh, pretty good. I'm comfortable. <laughs> if we are well, talking uh, about, if, uh, if you don't mind, if we are talking about PCI DSS, I'm going. Uh, I assume we we will have some time for demo, and I'm going uh, to to provide you demo exactly about, from PCI point of view. So oh, that's are, super. Yeah, we'll we'll save that for the second segment. Actually, I was going to make more of a comment than ask a question. Uh, you know, the as I said in the intro, one of the things that immediately immediately impressed me about uh, about your company is that you you guys actually seem to know what PCI requirements that you were dealing with, which was so refreshing to me. Um, the and the requirements in question you have you have listed out on your on your website but they mostly are the requirements that have to do with identity and access management and and most importantly tracking all the activity of privileged access accounts uh i i have so many customers t- t- to this day and i have been doing pci for 16 years that struggle with the ability to uh you know Manage user accounts, restrict access, uh, you know, based on business need to know, uh, you know, cut down the activities of privileged accounts, and then actually track the activities of privileged users. Uh, for those reasons alone, if you guys are doing that, uh, and that's just sort of from what it sounds like, that's just sort of the activity that you've just collect the data that you collect you intended you're trying you know we're talking about and you're trying to do more with it in terms of insider threat protection but just merely capturing that data and and being able to pass it on to a, a sim solution or or to or wherever the customer wants it from a pci perspective that's huge uh because there's so many companies out there that struggle with that because well they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> it's my read on it. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's very important. By the way, we uh, I forgot to notion that uh, we participated in Max thirty seven cybersecurity accelerator, and uh, and uh, after this, I understood that it's very important to to speak the same language with uh, your uh, audience. So mm-hmm. if uh, if we uh, we have subjects that we we support PCI DSS and our audience are technical people is technical people so we we should provide exactly information exactly what exactly uh, requirements from PCI DSS we cover we help mm-hmm. to cover uh, by our solution of course it is impossible to cover all requirements but sure. we, we provide more information about this uh, by the way, there, as far as I know, there is no strict requirement from uh, PCI DSS to have uh, video recording of user session. But I hope in new version of PCI DSS, <laughs> uh, they, they have more uh, strong requirements for uh, user <laughs> well, monitoring. You, you can hope. <laughs> But yeah, because you know, because now breath. we have more and more. No, if we are talking about PCI DSS, we don't have a lot of leads yet, uh, mm-hmm. a lot of customer. Uh, but if we are talking about, for example, a Swift customer security program and mm-hmm. NIST, they already have requirements about indexed video screen recording via Jump Server, for example. And uh, so that is why people use our product in their environment. Well, uh, because I work for a QSA company and we have access to the draft version of version four, we're sworn to secrecy to reveal details uh, at this time. But what I will say to you, and hopefully I don't get in trouble for this, is (laughs) that uh, while you know, while the exact detail of what you're asking may or may not be in the rec- in the new version of the D- DSS, what is coming in the new version of the DSS is more flexibility to satisfy the requirements 
in more and different and creative and technologically advanced and forward thinking ways rather than sort of the traditional view well, PCI says I have to run an antivirus solution, so I need to have some sort of signature-based solution. I, I can't entertain all these other cool things. Well, they're making it easier for all the other cool things and all the new technologies that are that are available from a security perspective to be used to meet the requirements, as long as it makes sense, as long as it's meeting the spirit of the requirements. So, in that respect, uh, it, you know, it's certainly a possibility. So I'm, you're basically I'm, saying it's I don't descriptive it, rather than prescriptive. Is it good or not for us? I don't know <laughs> yet. Is it possible well, to get this draft <laughs> or it's still hidden? It's it's possible, but you, not, you might need to work to, with your marketing department to, to come up with more meaningful language that actually makes sense and is relevant. And okay. it appeals to the PCI ear. To the, to the companies that have to do PCI. And companies that have to do PCI, by and large, are looking for point solutions to meet specific requirements. They don't, they don't need yet another tool that's just going to monitor their environment and tell them the 50,000 ways that they're doing things wrong. They want to have specific tools that actually meet the specific requirements and ha actually help them do the, do the requirement, meet the requirement. You know, uh, yeah, absolutely agree, because actually we organically grew to a company which support access management, identity management, just because we, we are working with security departments of big companies, and uh, our road, we, we developed with them our roadmap. Actually, after each demo, technical demo, I have rec uh, new mm -hmm. requirements. Please add new feature, please add new feature, etc. And if we are talking about roadmap, for example, it's pretty... Uh, okay. the, the question is about task priority, because at the moment I have thousands of requirements. And uh, of course, the priority one is uh, requirements from uh, security departments because to, uh, to comply with uh, different security regulations. So this is number one for us. Great. Well, hey, let's uh, let's take a quick break, and we'll come back, and we'll we'll continue the discussion. And and you mentioned that you have a, a little bit of a demo for us. We're we're all anxious to to take a look and see what this thing looks like. So uh, hold on tight. We'll be right back. 